Hi there. This is a response to one of the guys on Facebook who asked me a question about the Dutch Master feeder rods that I used to use and the new rods that I replaced them with. Let me go into uh, the, the. I'll start with the Dutch Master first, then I'll move on to the the, the Distance Master, the ones that have replaced them. Let me just set this down. I have. I quite liked these rods you know I've had them for a long time maybe over 10 years in fact it would be over 10 years I think it was 20 2011 when I bought them oh just a just a quick side note see this stuff here amazing go to your local uh, B&Q or home base or something like that there this is designed to like tie plants to sticks it's just wire with like a soft rubber coating Really good to tie your fishing rods up with. It doesn't mark them, doesn't do anything bad, and you, it comes in a length of like 30 foot, so you can do loads of rods. Anyway, the, disc, the Dutch Master range, the three rods that I have were the, I'm just going to look it down here, this is this is the 12 8 60 gram, this was the lightest version of them. I then have the, the 13 foot, uh, 13 foot 2 80 gram. And then I think the other one's a 14, I don't have it with me because I've lent it to somebody. A 14 foot, uh, but it was 120 or 130 grams. It was a very heavy rod. It was purely for uh, when the river was belting through and or I had to fish through horrible conditions and had to whip a feeder at a, at a distance or I needed to. The, the problem straight off the bat with the Dutch Master feeder rod. Now this rod... And this rod take the same tips. And they're all in here. Any other rod that was labelled Dutch Master by Preston take different tips. So in effect you've got rods that take specialised tips and rods that take other specialised tips. Which makes the... For me it, it was a bad idea by, by Preston Innovations. And I like Preston Innovations. I like the tackle. But for me it was a bad idea to put... Uh, different tips for the same family of rod. They should have used um, the same tips all around. That way the tips could have been replaced from the 14 foot to the th 12 foot. Um, let's start with the, the the thing I like. The things I liked about the Dutch Master. I say liked in past tense. If I, if I had to use these rods tomorrow I wouldn't complain. Cracking rods. Things I liked about the rods. Uh, nice long. Like This is where your reel is going to screw in. This is the end of the rod. When I'm playing a fish, and especially if I'm playing a fish and trying to use a landing net, so the rod will be in this hand, the landing net will be in, imagine I'm holding a landing net, landing net will be in this hand. I want to use my elbow as leverage, so I want the rod to be basically against my elbow, so I can pull and move the fish. Like that there. Nice and easy, you basically use your elbow as the anchor point, and there's a long enough uh, butt section so you can do that if you're also trying to leverage the fish you can also basically jam it into the bottom of your into your groin sort of area and hold the rod up like that there while you're trying to net something bigger say like a really big broom or something the the other thing that i liked was the reel seats the reel seats really strong there was no wobble in any of the reels i used uh bearing in mind i used the dog turd Shimano 4000 FA feeder reel that was crap. It fit this rod perfectly. The Preston uh, 620, you know, uh, I think there was the ex extremity, yes, this the extremity reels, all fit this rod. Again, cracking little reels for this rod, really, really fitted it well. One of the things I liked about it is the little line clip there. Sounds something pathetic and small, but this little thing. You could tuck it in like that there, or you could fold it right back that there. But it was kind of on a spring, so wherever you put it, it would kind of clip out of the way when you needed it to. I like that. That's a nice touch, you know. Um, the decals on the rod, they've obviously faded over time, you know. These rods got a lot of abuse. You can tell by the core handle that they've, uh, they've been well used. The good thing about having a longer handle on a feeder rod is that you can cast the rod a lot better. You can have your reel on this hand and hold the rod here and then push and pull. 
so that the feeder can be put out to the horizon. That's called winding up a cast or loading up the rod. So you've got your rods, you know, you'd have this up above your head, or even if you're not fishing that far away, you know, you just basically flick like that there. The, the, the harder you pull this hand to your stomach while you're pushing forward, will give you more, it'll compress the blank of the rod and it'll throw the feeder the right sort of distance. Um, with this rod, I could comfortably sit and fish to 65, 70 metres all day. Uh, if it's getting a bit windier and the weather's getting a bit more crap, I would step up to the longer rod. You know, but again, the rod, these rods were kind of, I think at the time, they were rated to like a maximum of 60 metres. Uh, I have no doubt that with the right sort of feeders, these rods could reach long past that, long past that. Negative about the first section of the rod, there's no eyes on the first section. So you have to go to the second section to get your first eye. And the eyes on the rod, I'm not sure how much you're really going to see, they are uh, double-legged eyes, but you'll notice that they're, they're very straight. They're 90 degrees from the rod. Uh, this kind of had an issue with the braid because if you cast, if it was like windy and you're casting into the wind there was times where you would get like a frap up where the braid would kind of somehow wrap around the bottom eye and get caught and you'd break off uh, so there was a little bit of an issue with that but the other part of the rod that that I, that I it came in three parts, well three parts plus your tip so it, all in all there was four parts of the rod I found if you were casting all day with it, eventually the, the rod would begin to turn in the joints and you'd have to kind of take it, push the rod, seat it back properly and get get back fishing. You know, it was be minor, small things. I don't understand why Preston made this rod into a three-section rod, but it came as a three-section rod. Um, Historically, when you have rods, like travel rods with lots of, lots of different sections, they created what was called hard spots in the rod. So you'd have like a curve with a hard spot that would kind of interfere with how you play the fish. I never noticed hard spots on these rods with the connections. Uh, again, these rods here, I've used them for a long, long time and I really enjoyed using them. The only problems that I have, besides the fact that it's a three-piece rod, comes down to these, the tips for the rods. Dutch Master, or Preston, who made Dutch Master, decided in their infinite wisdom to label all the tips DM123 blah blah blah. Instead of putting a weight, like a one ounce or a one and a half or a two, three, whatever weight. And that kind of made, it kind of threw me at the start. You know, the, the tip, for the very the DM1 tip. This, these tips here were too light for the rod. Far too light for the rod. If you went to cast them, the top eye of this tip it's too small. When you're casting with a braid, you're going to have a shock leader, and the shock leader is going to have a knot connecting it to, from the mono to the braid. The knot's not very big, but then again, neither's the top eye on the feeder on the feeder tip here. So I used to smash these all the time. Uh, maybe a little bit of weed get caught in the in the 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 the, uh, the shock leader knot. And trying to bring it back through before you'd be concentrating on landing the fish, and the next thing you'd hear is a crack, and these tips would break. So consequently, we ended up fishing with DM2 and DM3. The DM2 was like my go-to starting off tip. This is the last DM2 tip that I have, and these are the last two DM3 tips that I have. Trying to find these at replacements now became a challenge, shall we say. Became very difficult. And I ended up speaking to a specialist that deals with replacements and spares 
It's basically a, it's, a, it's an arm of the Billy Clark tackle shop. And got chatting to him, and he was nice. He was nice enough on the time. He said he will to source me. He was fit to source me one of these and two of these. So I said, okay, I'll take what you have. I said, when will you be getting more in stock? And he basically said, there, there might not be any more coming in stock. That he's having trouble finding them. So this kind of left me at a at an impasse, you know, because once those spare tips, you know, all went, I was kind of left with a rod that I couldn't use. So I ended up looking to replace the Dutch Master feeder. Now let me just say again, I like the Dutch Master rods. Preston hit the ball, you know, for little minor things. It's an easy six and a half out of ten for the Dutch Master rods, and that's me being as picky as fuck. It's an easy three, six and a half out of ten. You know, little things like the feeder tips being a bit of a bollocks to try and swap with other rods, and the eyes on them being a little bit smaller in the lower halves. It being a three-piece rod, you know, little small things that would make it a pain in the ass. You know, so that that's what would irritate me about the rod. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with the thickness of the blanks and the heavier rod that I have. It's, it's, it's actually kind of just about as thick as the... This is the 13 foot 2 version, the, the 80 gram rod. The, the 14 foot rod I have is the same sort of thickness as that blank. And it's not really heavy. So, it's not a heavy rod to cast. It's not a big, hard thing to cast. It's, it's a good rod. And I found it really good on the river arm when the river arm was pulling through. And you're having to chuck like a 5 ounce feeder. Or if I was fishing somewhere, maybe like uh, at the airport in Loch Earn, where you're having to cast a long ways, you could hit that distance with this rod. But because of the weather conditions, you know, maybe there's a lot of wind, a lot of side wind, a lot of rain, it was shitty conditions. So I would up the lead weight of the feeder and use the bigger rod to hit the same distance, because you're using that extra power to really push the feeder to the same distance. Like I said, if I had to go back to using these tomorrow, and if I could source enough spare tips for this rod, I would quite happily use these rods, uh, you know, until I kick the bucket stuff. So that was Dutch Master, Preston Innovations Dutch Master series of rods. Now what did I replace the, those rods with? I replaced them with the Preston Innovations Distance Master. Same sort of theme. Basically, it's the Mark II of those. And I have two of them sitting here. I'm going to get the other one. Eventually, I just kind of scrape the pennies up together. This is the, uh, the this is the 100 gram version. Again, we have the nice long butt that I can use my elbow to connect to if I'm fishing. You know, it's, it's paired with an extremity 620 reel. But if I really, really wanted it to, I could use my 550s the Shimano Altegra mini pits. I could use the, I have a set of those as well. Again, I use the mini pits. Again, if it was like really shitty weather. This rail's good, it'll get you to where you need to go. But with the Altegras, because it's a bigger spool, it gets you there that little bit easier. And there's more line per turn than what there is. I think this is like 90, 89 centimeters or 90 centimeters. Whereas the Altegra is like 97 or 98 centimetres. So it get, it's a little, it sounds a little bit, it sounds a tiny little bit. But it means less winding, means the fish gets brought into you quicker. And you, know, you get the job done a bit faster. Uh, again, the styling on the Dutch the Distance Masters is like a little bit of blue. I'm not even sure if the camera is going to pick that out. And you know the, the writing on it is fairly nondescript. It's fairly kind of... You, if you, you'd have to look hard to find the writing because it doesn't stand out. On these rods, they have a little eye where you would attach your hooks. It doesn't fold in or out. It's just a fixed eye that's been whipped into the rod permanently. Um, the butt section, you'll see the blank kind of has a bulge here and then a little thin bit here. It comes out to another bulge. That's to fit into the Preston rod wrists, the little, little uh, U-rod wrist with the gripper teeth. That's so that will fit in there. And I suppose if you're using this rod to fish for carp, which you could, um, guys use these rods to fish places like Barston. 
so they're fishing for carp basically. Uh, that's kind of so that the rod doesn't get ripped out of you out of the rests. Either way, if you look, if you're fishing method feeder style, always hold the rod because <laughs> a big carp will just hit you and take the rod away. Again, these rods are a three foot three piece rod, but the the ver the, the end with the tip. I'll just take this away. This is them again. Oh, I'm touching it, touching it a little bit first. Getting ahead of myself. Getting ahead of myself. Remember, I said on the on the Dutch Masters, there was no eye on the top section, the bottom section. Well, these rods are a little bit longer than the Dutch Master. This is the butt of the rods on the on the ground. You're probably not going to see it, but you can see the length difference between the Dutch Masters and Distance Masters. There's a fair bit of distance or difference in size, shall we say? This eye, again, you'll notice that it's cantered so that it's levered like that. It's not 90 degrees. That's called anti-frap. So when you cast, and maybe there's wind coming into your face, the braid is less likely to get wrapped around this eye and you'll get break-offs. Um, again, cracking idea. Really, really nice idea because, let's just be honest, if you've spent the time to break out distance sticks, and you've wrapped up the rod to the right distance and then the first or so cast you've got to frap up and you break off you've got to then put on a new shock leader wrap up the rods again and then get back into fishing that could cost you 10 or 15 maybe even 20 25 minutes and here in northern ireland and in the south most of the time you're fishing excuse me is for uh, hybrids so the hybrids will come in in a wave and come, go away as quick as can. So that 20 minutes that's took you to fuck about and get the rod connected again, that could have been your window period for catching your fish. So when I'm fishing, I always have like the two rods I would have, I would have them set up. You know, if I was fishing different lengths, different swims, like, you know, I would have like a rod set up for the, for the further away and the rod set up for the closer away. With the rod that's set up for the furthest away this reel has two line clips I would have the rod clipped the first time at the shortest distance I was fishing so if I had to use the longer distance rod to fish shorter distance because that's where the fish were cast out till you hit the clip undo the clip wind in, bait up, cast out hit the clip and you'll be where your first rod was uh, again if you count the number of reel turns as in the number of times your hand goes around like start at the top and goes up that would be one you know one wind you can count them and keep it in your head so that when you go to clip up again you could say it's 20 turns of my hand to put the thing back on the clip It'll not be as precise as the distance sticks but it'll be in the ballpark you know um that's what I do. That's just pure, pure quickness. But anyway, that's the reel, so we're not talking about the reel. With the, the Distance Master rods, again, it's got the same sort of like foam cork, foam, really strong reel seat, same as the Dutch Master rods. Anti frap eyes, really, really good. I like those a lot. The power in this, these, these, this family of rods seems to be in the bottom two sections. The top section, it does have a lot of power in it, but the power definitely seems to be in the the bottom two of the rod. So if you really, really had to pull to get fish over a ledge, away from weeds or a snag or whatever, the, trust me, that rod will have the power to do that. You're not of shortness of power, even if you are fishing with it for carp. The feeder tips for the Distance Master rods all the feeder tips fit all the rods so you're no longer having to buy different feeder tips for different rods and you're no longer having to mess around like that there you know all the feeder tips will fit all the rods the feeder tips start in two ounces two ounces is the smallest that you would get then there's three ounce and four ounce again those are the only three tips they produce they don't make any heavier or any lighter with this rod it's not designed 
for chucking 15 metres into a mill pond. It's designed to whip out a feeder at your distances. Typically here, in, like the, if I'm fishing on the urn, if I'm fishing on the big lock, you know, those fish might be sitting at 60, 70 metres. You know, so you have to be able to do that. You have to be able to be comfortably casting that all day. And it's a pain in the ass at times, I'll be honest with you. Casting a 50 gram or a 60 gram feeder, you know, every, you know, three to six minutes all day at that distance, that can be a pain in the ass. You know, it can be, it can really take it out of you. You know, you don't think about it, but it can. The thing that I liked about the tips being that they all fit with all the different rods is that this is being the smallest, the smallest tip. If this stops wiggling, stop wiggling. The eyes of the tip are a hell of a lot bigger. I'll just take it off this row here. They're a hell of a lot bigger than the eyes on the Dutch Master Rod. Now I'm going to try and do this properly here. Hold on. Let me just set this up. Right. This is the smallest Dutch Master tip and the smallest distance master tip. And you can see that the difference in the size of the eyes is a lot different, you know. So your shock leader knots are going to fly, they will fly through this, there's no problem. So that's kind of an improvement on the Dutch Master range of feeder rods. Um, this rod being a three piece, this is the top section that obviously fits your little, your, your tip in. And all these rods, and I'm going to put them down so that the butt is touching the concrete of the garage floor. That is the size of them. So you can, you know, they're, they're again, three-piece rods. But there isn't, I haven't noticed hard spots in them. The retail for these rods, I'll just look it up now. Should really have wrote this down in a bit of paper, shouldn't I? Right. Sorry, I should have wrote this down a bit earlier. Right, the three rods are 12 foot 6, 80 gram, 13 2. 100 gram and 13 foot 10, 120 gram. The RRP for these rods for the 12 foot 6 is 280 pound. But if you go on to somewhere like Anglin Direct or any of the big box websites, they're about 240. You know, to, for the 12 foot 6 rod, it's about 240. I'm actually looking at Anglin Direct here. Not that I'm sponsored by Anglin Direct or anything like that. It was just literally the first thing that popped up. Uh, yeah. 238, 239, 242 and 280 for the three different rods. And again, they all come with the same tips. 2, 3 and 4 tips. They're all... Again, I'm not going to read you the blurb because it's you know, standard industry blurb, you know. It is, it is a, I haven't yet actually used that rod. The last time I was out fishing, I was using the the the, the 80 gram, the 12 foot 6 80 gram rod. And again, extremity, 620 reel. That was the first extremity reel that I bought. Um, the initial review for that is still on my YouTube channel. I think it was like three or four years ago. That reel, as you can probably tell by the colour of it, it's took a licking and it keeps on ticking. You know, even after all the abuse that this reel has taken, there's still nothing there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it gets stripped and a bit of greased, a bit of oil every year. But cracking little reels for the money, you know. Can't fault those reels for the money. Like I said, I will have the the other 
Distance Master rods will have the three of them. And I'll probably pair it with another extremity 620 reel because those reels really fit those rods well. Uh, like I said, I could put the, the Shimano Altegra, the big pit reels, the big pit style reels on there uh, if I really needed to, but I don't really think I need to at the moment. I did look at one of the fellas that I know that fishes with these rods, he fishes with the, the Daiwa. I can't remember the make of the reel, but it's there, like a feeder big pit reel. It's the one that's like 250 quid. That's a lot of reel for feeder fishing. Uh, I'm not so sure I could justify that. Although I did see somewhere that was selling them for £150 each, which would put them comparable to the, the Ultegra sort of price range. But again, I'm not really in the mood to spend another, you know, 450 for three reels, you know, even if I got them at that cheap price. You know, the, the pennies just don't stretch quite that far. So there we have it. The sole reason I changed from Dutch Master to Distance Master was because of the lack of availability of the rod of the of the of the tips. Now you're probably some of you probably sitting at home going, How the fuck are you breaking so many feeder tips? Uh, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. To be fair, the, the stronger ones of them, I, I didn't really actually break them fishing. The, there was kind of a bit of an incident with the car door. And I kind of closed the, the van door and smashed four tips. I could have fucking cried that day. But I broke four tips in the one day. Not from fishing. Purely because I left the fucking... I left the rod tube in the wrong place and I ended up just destroying, was it four times 30 quid? Yeah, it was a lot of money that day was destroyed. So, I have changed over. I quite like the new rods. It's always nice to have new tackle, you know, it's always nice to have new gear. But that's really what I've, what I've done. Uh, so since the video was more like a like a tackle review, I guess, like a like a like an initial review of the distance masters and a bit of a a review of the the old Dutch masters. You know, again, like I said, I've I would have I would have had no problem if somebody said to me, you know, you're gonna have to fish with the Dutch masters the rest of your days. Again, I would have had no issues doing that. I would have had no problems doing that. The only problem was was predominantly getting the spares for the rod now. Uh, I have delib deliberately went away and uh, this is my, my, my tips holder. I have deliberately went away and ordered more of the two ounce tips because I figure the lightest tips that's there is going to break. So that's a spare two ounce, then there's the, the two three and the two four ounce tips. Again, and all these tips, nice big eyes, easy to see colourings even in low light. And hopefully they bring me many years of catching fish, the same as their predecessors did. Since smashing my uh, feeder tips in the van, I have upgraded the uh, protection for the old feeder tips. You know, I can remember at the time looking at one of these. It was like a I can't even. I think it was a. a I, I can't. I can't even make. I think it was Cresta, but it was like a. It was like a plastic tube about this big. That held all the tips, and I thought uh, I'd have better things to spend the money on. And literally, the next session was when I closed the back door of the van and destroyed four of the feeder tips. So, <laughs> yeah, hindsight being what it is, I would have loved to have just said, you know, fuck it, I'm going to spend that ten or fifteen pound, whatever it was, and bought that. Whether it would have stopped the door breaking the tips and the rod is another thing. But it would have been big enough that it would have noticed it, as opposed to having 
tips in a small plastic tube like this. It's one of them things. It wasn't, you know, sometimes you break feeder tips when you're fishing with them. Sometimes you break them because you're a fucking idiot like me and you close the van door on them. And this is why they come with spares. What else? There's not much else I can say about them. Again, Preston Innovations do do very good fishing rods. Um, I did look at the the free spirit feeder rods, and then I very very quickly stopped looking at them because the prices for them were crazy. I looked at the Daiwa tournament range of rods, and the prices for them were crazy, so I stopped looking there. I looked at the Guru rods. And Guru seemed to go from budget to high end with nothing in the middle. So again, I, I don't. I'll be honest with you. Feeder fishing, feeder fishing can be fucking tough on gear, tough on reels and rods. So when you're going to spend, when I'm spending the money on something, I want to to, to uh, bit of a hangnail. I want the feeder rod to be able to be something I can cast all day with, no matter how much I have to wind it up to put the feeder at that distance. I've got old Drennan rods that were like labelled as uh, heavy heavy feeder rods, like 13 foot heavy feeder rods and all sorts of stuff. And throughout the years of fishing, I have broken feeder rods purely on the, on the cast. Never so much playing fish, it's always been on the cast. Now there are times where, yes, if you're throwing a 4 ounce feeder on a rod that's not really rated for it, then that's a fucking stupid idea. But the rods that I was using, the feeders I was throwing at the time that broke the rods, those uh, feeders were a lot lighter than what the rod was rated to. I've kept one of the Drennan feeder rods purely for uh, sentimental reasons. Because it was, you know, one of the first sort of things I'd bought when I went across to England to uh, end up fishing the River Seven, catching barbel and chubbing up and stuff like that there. So it was more so for sentiment and I was genuinely fucking gutted when I came back home and I was fishing, uh, I think it was, at the, it was at the Bow Island Bridges. I went to cast and the rod just went to pieces around me on the cast and I was, I was absolutely gutted, you know, gutted. When I was doing the match fishing stuff, I would have had two of every rod that I was using for feeder fishing. So if I was going to still do competitions today, it wouldn't just be two of the distance masters. If there's three in a collection, then I would have to have six of them. Purely that I could have the rods clipped up at the distances I needed to get them clipped up to. You know, so that you don't have to fuck about with line clips on rods and reels. So if one gets one gets messed up on a cast you can just quickly leave it down you pick up your spare it's already clipped to the same distance and you just rock and roll and keep going because that again with your competition style fishing it's about the speed that you can keep the feeder going in and get the fish out um it's not really i don't really need to do it for pleasure fishing you know with like i said earlier on in the video if i was fishing with one rod at 50 meters and another rod at 60 you know I would clip up the big rod, I would clip up the, 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 the smallest rod at 50, then the next rod, was, the first time it would be clipped would be 50, 50 metres, and then the additional 10 metres added on. And again, I said I would count the handles, the, every time my hand goes round, that's one, two, whatever. So I would count that and end up with a quick, uh, a quick means of getting the feeder to where I was fishing earlier on. You know, again, with the Dutch Master rods and the Distance Master rods, I can't fault the aesthetics. I can't fault them the, the the way they're labelled, the way they look. You know they're understated. They're nice. They're black rods. You know. What more do you want? Feeder fishing's tough on your gear, so you just all I ask for a feeder rod and a feeder reel is that it's able to stand up for the day's fishing. Will these rods stand up? I don't quite know that yet. I've only used them twice. I haven't used the. The, the longer version and haven't even got the you know the, the the 14 foot or 13 foot whatever it was 
I forgot the third one, the, the 120 gram. I tend to go off how heavy the cast, like, you know, 80, 60, 80, 100, you know, or 80, 100, 120. I kind of go off that because in my head I know, you know, 60 grams is 2 ounce, 80 grams is 2 and a bit ounce, 2 and a half ounce. So if you're throwing a 50 gram feeder, that's less than 2 ounces. You put a tiny fill that up with the crumb and the particles or whatever you're throwing, that gets it close to your casting range, your casting weight, and you can put the feeder out accordingly. Um, so I hope that clears the, the question. Oh, <laughs> since posting that I swapped over because I couldn't get tips, I've had four or five people that have tackle shops reach out to me and say, I can get tips. So I was like, fuck. <laughs> oh, no. So it's just, it's just sod's law. Um, I'll keep the distance master rods as, or the, you know, the Dutch master rods as spares. If, if I have somebody that's coming with me fishing, I'll rig them up with, with those rods there and they'll sort them. That'll sadly, ha happily, you know, sort anybody, anybody's day fishing out. It'll not be a problem. Yeah. But both the, the 13 foot rod and the 12 foot rod, you know, they have had a lot of, a lot of use, an awful lot of use, and I don't have a problem with them. I actually wish that when I came back to Northern Ireland, I kind of wish that I had bought these rods a bit sooner, because... I was kind of, well, when I came back in 2011, I wasn't really thinking about fishing again. I was kind of in another place. <laughs> so, there we go. Dutch Master, Distance Master. Still good rods, still love them, but the king is dead, long live the king, so to speak. No fishing this weekend because we've got thunder and lightning storms. I did go out yesterday. That was the Saturday. This is the Sunday. And I drove to four locations. At all four locations there was people out angling. In fact, one of the places I was fishing, I was going to fish. Uh, the guys that were parked there had parked their van off the hardcore road. The farmer had put down the like, gravel stones to park on. And they had parked off the, the off the road and their vehicle was slowly sinking into the muck because we've had a solid week of rain and the fields that were rock hard two weeks ago because of a nice sunshine weather were swamped now. <laughs> so I don't not so sure how their fishing went, but I'm pretty sure it was uh it was half a job getting their van out unstuck. Before I left I called into the local farmer and was speaking to him and says, you know, you might get a a knock on the door from a couple of English guys asking for you to recover their van. And he was happy enough. That's the good thing about fishing here in like Fermanagh. If you plight, mind your manners. And most times like a farmer will genuinely help you out. If a farmer does genuinely help you out, you know, offer him, you know, twenty or thirty quid as a thank you. You know, not that most, not that many of them will say to you, "I want X amount of money to pull you out in the first place," but it's just nice to be nice. So, be prepared. If you do get stuck, it's always nice to have somebody giving you a hand. So, make it worth their while. Uh, what else? General theatre fishing here. You're probably looking at those rods and going, they're a bit heavier for for like bream fishing. Feeder fishing in Ireland is, is a bit tougher than, than normal feeder fishing in England. You know, the fish are, the fish are wild. We don't really have fisheries where there's lots of pellets goes in. So everything is mostly wild. It's mostly uh, my ground bait mixes for here. They're all very sweet. You know, very full of naturals, very full of pellet, not a lot of pellets, very full of casters, maggots, sweet corn. Uh, if I was pre-baiting, I would get, like, 
uh, vital in dog food, flaked maize, soak it in a bucket overnight uh, with some molasses. So you're putting lots of sugars into it. And that would be my pre bit, you know, stuff that there's no point dumping pellets in, I don't think, because the, the carp, there's no carp in our natural waterways here. Well, there's not supposed to be any carp in our natural waterways. I have heard the stories of some carp being caught on the river ban and, you know, Loch Ney having some carp that the net men have caught. I have heard those stories, but it is what it is. In England, all the natural venues, because at one point in time there was carp, there has been carp introduced to the natural venues, all the natural fish, like the roach, the tench, the bream, they've all keyed into the benefits of eating pellets. Uh, not so much here in Ireland. They don't really have, they don't really see enough pellets for them to recognise. I don't think that they're, they're a good feed, they're a good food source. Uh, and there's actually some matches on the urn where you're not allowed to use fish meal ground bits because the trout guys cry about fish meal ground bits and attracting the trout. Again, I've no, I've no studies done on the, the way the trout are attracted. I catch fucking tons of trout fishing with, you know, very sweet, you know, very, very sweet ground bit that's got no fish meal and I still catch plenty of trout. I still catch plenty of trout with fucking pike baits, let alone, you know, so trout guys will whinge at everything. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. Uh, I understand it's a bit shit that there's no vlog this weekend. I am off some days this week from work, so I do intend to get out fishing. I actually really intend to get fishing two or three days at the, the time that I'm off. Um, I've got some new new tackle to test out. I've replaced the old six leg Preston Innovations platform with the Duralite Matrix, uh, the second gen one. Uh, purely because it's a lot lighter, it folds down into a more compact package. And that was, I looked at that one and I looked at the, the actual Preston Innovations one and the, the Matrix one for me was, it, it was at, it came at a cheaper price so I ended up buying the Matrix one. Um, again, it's purely about weight reduction. Because of the way my, my back's injured, my days of carrying heavy weight across long fields of distance are there's not happening anymore it just won't happen anymore uh, I'm actively looking at buying or getting a a motor for my Preston Barrow the four wheel barrow I've seen guys that can rig them with a it's like a golf cart motor so the rear two wheels instead of them being the thin wheels they've replaced somebody has welded up this, this thing that's the uh, a golf cart motor and it actually looks pretty good. It's got nice thicker wheels. It's got a decent sort of size of a battery. Okay, fishing trolley, you're going to be carrying more than a golf cart or a golf trolley will. I'm not sure if it's a golf cart or a golf trolley. It's probably the cart because it carries people. I'd have to look into it. Um, there was some guy in England that was making them and he was, he was fit to send like the whole kit out. So that could be something to review in the future. I just haven't. I've sent him a couple of emails. He replied to some of them. Uh, then he said he was going on holiday and blah, blah, blah. And it hasn't got back to me since. So I don't quite know what the story is happening with that. Uh, but anything that makes getting tackle from fishing from the van to the peg, anything that makes that job easier, I'm all for that. Uh, and if it means spending a few pounds to get the, like a battery operated trolley that can move the gear then I'm happy enough for that. You know, a lot of the time I end up fishing beside the van because I can't do, I, I just can't do the walk, I can't do the, the, you know, pushing the gear because, you know, destroyed knees, destroyed ankles, and two vertebrae and lower lumbar that's uh, fucked. So I can't, can't really load the back up and go off through the fields and carry other stuff. Anyway. Not that I want you to feel sorry for me. Anyway guys, until the next time, tight lines.